Episode 1. Man's Best Friend. The Beginning of an Unbreakable Bond. The American Kennel Club, or AKC, is considered one of the top authorities when it comes to dogs and dog breeding. Founded in 1884, the AKC provides a multitude of services designed to match those looking to own a dog with the most compatible breed for them, as well as foster responsible breeding practices with the aim to improve dog health and genetics within dog breeding. AKC's breeding services include DNA testing and dog DNA registration to prevent inbreeding, education on best breeding practices, and discounts on essential animal welfare services such as microchipping and pet insurance. The AKC has strict regulations about what makes a definitive registered breed. Starting with only nine original breeds in the 1880s, the registry has since expanded to include over 200 recognized breeds. The main factor that defines whether a type of dog can be classified as a breed is the ability to breed true. That is to say, two dogs of the same breed, when bred together, will always produce a litter of puppies recognizable as belonging to that breed. To have an individual dog be recognized as a purebred, it needs to have both parents be purebreds of the same breed and, more importantly, meet its breed's standards, a set of distinct physical and psychological traits that characterize a specific breed's identity. These can include size, color or coat texture, as well as temperament, personality and instinctive behavior. For example, a purebred male Labrador Retriever will range in 22 and a half to 24 and a half inches in height, have a short straight coat, and be either black, yellow, or chocolate in color. The point of these strict regulations on how a dog should look and act is not just for aesthetics. Instead, the system is designed to preserve the historical purpose and genetic health of a breed. Animals falling outside their breed-specific standards do exist but may produce undesirable side effects, such as not being able to fill its intended purpose, displaying unwanted behaviours, or possessing genetic defects that will affect its long-term health. Perhaps the most iconic AKC-recognised Australian breed is the Cattle Dog, affectionately known as the Red or Blue Healer. But Australia's long history with man's best friend begins not in 1788 with the introduction of British colonisers, but long before that, around 4,000 years ago. Canine lupus dingo, or just the dingo to locals, is Australia's largest terrestrial carnivore, an apex predator across deserts, wetlands and coastal climates. Despite being regarded as an iconic Australian animal right alongside the kangaroo or kookaburra, genetic testing of the canines reveals that dingoes originated in Asia, with their introduction to Australia theorised to be a result of seafarers from the Southeast Asian region. It's also theorised that dingoes may be at least partially responsible for the disappearance of the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger, the only other terrestrial predator in mainland Australia due to the two species competing for resources. But as Australia's first introduced canid species, the dingo paved the path for Australia's beautiful history with domesticated dogs. With the rise in farming and an increased need for large-scale cattle and livestock operations to feed the rapidly growing population of the New South Wales colony, settlers turned to herding and livestock dogs. The first true Australian working dog was created by Thomas Hall during the early 1800s. Hall was a New South Wales stockman looking to develop a herding dog that would thrive in the harsh Australian climate, unlike the Smithfields and Old English Sheepdogs currently used that were unable to cope in the conditions. Hall chose to cross a Northumberland drover's dog with wild dingoes in the area, creating the Hall's Healer which later became known as the wildly popular Blue Healer or Australian Cattle Dog. In 2024, the popularity of dogs as companions rather than co-workers has skyrocketed, with almost two-thirds of all Australian households owning at least one dog. It's clear that the country's love of their pets isn't going away anytime soon. But that leaves a question not many tend to ask. If there are so many dogs in Australia, what effect is it having on our native environment? 
If you've ever found yourself wondering exactly that, then this podcast is for you. Over the next three episodes, we'll be diving deep into Australian dog and breeding culture, its relationship with our ecosystem, and what you as a pet owner can do to minimize your impact. Welcome to The Canine Connection, the relationship between dogs and native Australian wildlife. Thank you.